I am back! I have returned! Okay, so you guys seem to really enjoy the first redesign video, kind of, for the Flash villains, and I really enjoyed doing it, so... <laughs> uh, you guys can check out that, it's linked in the description. Uh, this one I might do as a co-hosted video, uh, so with Degenerate J, uh, and I am one step ahead of you guys, I won't be doing Reverse Flash, but I will be doing more of these because I really enjoy it. So I'll be doing Killer Frost because she's amazing and she's very frosty, no pun intended. Pie Piper, the top, and the, probably the most very annoying, frustrating design, ugh, Peekaboo, because this one gave me a bit of trouble. But yeah, now our first redesign, Harley Wathaway, the master of all things music, and sound, the Pied Piper. Now this redesign was giving me a bit of trouble, but I did not know too much about the Pied Piper. I know he is a very old villain who's went through a lot of different iterations, and I know he has a lot of different abilities, mainly around sound. He, most, the old version used a flute, and who was kind of like the original Pied Piper from the stories. So with my version, I decided to ramp it up a bit, taking his sound abilities and also his abilities of knowing sound to the max. Now also, the CW's version basically gave him hearing problems due to uh, something happening, I can't remember what, but basically I also thought it would be cool to give him other abilities based around sound, like the ability to see vibrations through these goggles and basically start to take away his sight a little bit. So not only does he have his flute, but he also has these gauntlets, similar to the CW version, to blast sound waves, or basically where he can disperse it through. His suit, when Mike was coming up with the concept of it, I was partially inspired by a lot of different things. First, I was also inspired by the X-Men's Banshee, <laughs> which is Marvel, which is weird, but I thought it was pretty cool. And I was also inspired by the Black Panther's Vibranium. When coming up with the suit design, I thought Harley Rathaway would make a suit that's more entangled with sound. So I thought, getting weird and cool with it, let's take his sound abilities and stuff like that to the max. So the suit would be made of this pretty cool uh, sound-based material, kind of like how um, Batman's cape, you send electric electricity through it in the Dark Knight films, basically pop. Uh, I thought similar concept, but apply that with sound. And I also was partially inspired by the, <laughs> uh, weird, but, uh, McDonald's light-up tables. It, basically, the sound would go carcelate through the suit, and basically, he would have multiple abilities, even the ability to fly. I even thought of giving him these two little things on his back, like little, almost as a reference to his cape, but not giving him a cape because... No capes. <laughs> um, I thought it would be cool to give him like the little things that Azrael has and the Dark Knight, uh, not Dark Knight, the Arkham Knight game and Arkham City uh, for like a cape where basically he can corselate sound through it and push himself through the air and also kind of have a few other abilities. I did want to take away his sight a little bit and basically make him more in time with like echolocation and stuff like that and basically make him a lot more of an interesting villain. I wanted to take some elements from the classic design where his the sound based in his suit would make little circles and little polka dots and stuff like that because I thought that was a w interesting, cool thing. I wanted to take a lot of elements from every design, but here's my redesign of Pied Piper. Now moving on to Killer Frost, one of my favorite villains. And I, yes, I know she's not a Flash villain. I know she's a Firestorm villain, but I got inter introduced to her through the Flash. So, sue me. <laughs> So, with this redesign, I wanted to take a lot of inspiration from the different iterations of Killer Frost that we've gotten from the comics, and a lot of it came from the classic version, 
Now, I am not completely sold on the outfit. I wanted to keep within the realm of the modern version of Killer Frost, but I wanted to pull from the classic version. So with, you know, trying to come up with a pose and also trying to come up with an outfit, I took a lot of inspiration from different concept art, fan art, which I will leave linked in the description along with the previous video. Um, Killer Frost is probably one of my favorite villains just because of how cool she is. <laughs> yeah, no. Get your pitchforks. I don't care. I made a pun. Uh, <laughs> so with hers, the design, I wanted to take influence for different hairstyles because the different iterations of Killer Frost went with different hairstyles, different outfits, and I wanted to mix them all together. Now, originally, I was going to go from the classic Killer Frost because there has been multiple versions from Caitlyn Snow to Crystal Frost to um, I can't remember the very first one and all that. So I wanted to go with the original version of Caitlyn Frost, or not Caitlyn Frost, uh, Killer Frost. <laughs> um, I can't remember her name in the time of this recording, but with her hair, I wanted to do something a bit different that I wanted to pull from the original classic comics. So, you know, I wanted to have a more Viking-esque Narnia look from like the White Queen from those movies. So I wanted to take elements from that. Now, originally I was going to have like a dress type of suit um, with coming up with her design. Now I also wanted to have her eyes be pure black with white highlights, kind of like uh, with the lichens from the dark, uh, the under, I can't remember the name of the movie, but basically <laughs> those movies. Now, I wanted to take elements from the modern versions and the classic versions. Now, I am not sold on this outfit. I tried to look at concept art of um, uh, an artist uh, at DC. Sometimes I'll check out their work uh, for Killer Frost. They're different versions. And I was looking at different winter outfits to kind of mix together. And I pulled a little bit of the design from this uh, piece of art. Um, on I think ArtStation, so I will leave that linked in the description. You check it out. Give that artist a follow if you haven't already. And I want to give their like a white leather jacket, blue skin, kind of take elements from every version of Killer Frost that we had, giving her more of a Viking hairstyle, kind of to give her more of that queenly look that the classic Killer Frost had in the original comics. Now it's not a perfect design. I might tweak it sometime in the future. But um, this is my quote-unquote kind of redesign of the queen of all frost, Killer Frost. Moving on, to put a spin on things, let's redesign the top. Now, the top is probably one of the more interesting villains because with the classic design and the classic comics, he's just kind of a basic villain with the abilities of Vertigo, with spinning wind to a point of making a top, and sometimes in different iterations he just spin, show, throws tops. And I, I honestly did not like a lot of different things. So with my redesign, I defi I within you know reason, I wanted to change a lot. I wanted to mainly change the gender. <laughs> Now, no, uh, if there's some people that are going to get their pitchforks out. You did what? Oh, shut up. <laughs> I wanted to take influence from the CW's version of the top and also with their power set and also giving them some pretty cool, interesting abilities. Now, with my iteration, I wanted to make them female. Now, if you can see with my design, I struggled a bit with it, but I think I found a crack with the idea of how I wanted to present things and pretty much giving them a lot of abilities that the CW had, but also some pretty cool new abilities to make them a little bit more dangerous and less of a goofy villain. Because the male version, I debated for a while of whether to keep them male, but I kind of like them being female. I don't think the Flash has too many female villains, and with the rogues, I thought making the top a female isn't really too bad. Also, with their hair, as you guys will probably be seeing a little bit, I did mix their hair and have it be dyed. So their original hair is black to go along with the original comics, but I also thought of having it be a little bit blonde 
mixed in with the top going green in a spiral, kind of to give that top feel. Something that I wanted to pull from, especially with the design. And also giving them like a few other things with the design. Their powers would be pretty OP. Giving them the ability to cause vertigo in somebody, but also the ability to control winds, and <laughs> getting some pretty cool ideas. I also had the idea of them to scene with the video. I struggled a bit with the design, but I wanted to give them some a lot of different abilities because obviously the top, I wanted to have them evolve around vertigo, wind, spinning things around, and a whole lot of other things. And the, the, I was partially inspired by CW's version when coming up with the design, which was a massive influence for me because, you know, <laughs> I watched it a lot. Um, so when coming up with some of the power set, I took a lot of a look at the classic comics and also just tried to decipher, okay, how much am I going to change? Now, keeping her female, I wanted her relationship with the rogues to be no-nonsense, occasional, you know, being a bit of a bitch in banter-wise, and kind of being a bit of a tomboy-ish type of minx type of character. Um, and I wanted her to be slightly crazy, but with my design, keeping the yellow and green, and also making her suit out of this cool material that's, you know, takes in wind and really has this cool look, I wanted to have a unique style to things. And with her hair, I struggled immensely with it, but I settled on basically giving her a bit of a pixie cut because I wanted to have it be dyed at black for her original hair as a reference to the classic comics, but mixing like a lady pixie cut type of hair and kind of giving her this very interesting type features that kind of change up things. Um, I did cut up a bit of a boob hole. I'm not a pervert. Shut up. Uh, it basically in the shape of top. But here is my redesign of the top. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this was very fun. Um, I design wise, I am so proud of how this turned out, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry guys, but I am very drained and due to like some time constraints, I was not able to think of anything for peekaboo. I might save her for another video. So make sure to like this one and follow. If you want to see more, I will also post this video on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, follow. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video. It, it's really appreciative of all of you guys and, and your support. If you haven't already, check out some of my other socials I, and the links in the description to the video and some other videos on my channel or check out some of the stuff on my shorts because I do a lot of art and all that if you're on TikTok. Um, I will also be posting the completed redesigns on my Twitter, uh, and uh, I sometimes I like to stream on Twitch, so if you can, want to, check me out there. But uh, let me know what your favorite redesign is in the comments down below. Let me know what characters you want to do, and let me know if you enjoyed the video, because I love reading the comments, and I love seeing what you guys have to say. Uh, I have some other videos coming up. You guys are going to be in a, <laughs> well, uh, in a hoot for what I got planned for a redesign video for Ben 10,000 and a collab video with the uh, Evolving Devil May Cry with somebody. You guys keep an eye out for those. I will, <laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and all that jazz it really helps me out. And bye bye